Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for coming to this channel. Thank you for checking out this video and others if, if you have as well. If not, I hope you check them out. Those of you who are returning, thank you so very much for your ongoing support and your encouraging comments. Um, always appreciated. And those of you who are here for the first time, um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share your thoughts, any comments you have. Now, where should I start? Well, I'll introduce myself. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, I am Megan. I'm the faithful fibromyalgia warrior. Um, you know, I was thinking about that title today and, uh, I didn't come up with it, my husband did. Uh, as you might guess, I suffer with fibromyalgia, um, as well as chronic lower back pain. What do they call it? Musculoskeletal pain or musculoskeletal pain, if you're here in the UK, as well as Raynaud's, IBS, arthritis, leaky gut, anxiety, depression, and recovery from bulimia. So. It's hard to say that I struggle with these things because I, I'm not struggling anymore. Um, I've been diagnosed with all of these things, but I've found my way through and able to manage all of these different and various conditions through two separate but connected pathways, if you will. Now, my husband gave me uh, the title a couple of years ago, and he said that as I try to stay joyful and positive um, in life, oh, sorry, how could I forget? I also have um, an underactive thyroid. There we go. That, that was one of the other things. And um, my liver... I was starting down the road to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease when I was put on statins. Okay, my triglycerides were through the roof. Which statins don't generally help with, as a side note, um, but they were mostly concerned with my LDL levels, uh, and of course the triglycerides still were high, because as I've discovered, and my GP didn't know this perhaps, but if I had simply been told to eliminate carbs as much as possible and all processed food and including oils and seed oils and you know uh, even even fructose um, because that eventually becomes fat in the body um, I would have seen a big difference and my triglycerides would never have been in a horrible state but of course I digress a little so, my husband gave me this, this title, he said, you know, he called me his warrior because two years ago, two and a half years ago, really, um, my pain was at an unbelievable level. You know, I, I couldn't cope anymore. Everything was at an unbelievable level. And almost, almost two and a half years ago, yeah, two and a half years ago, well, obviously, like everyone else, you know, um, we were in, starting into COVID. Um, now, the Christmas just before we officially announced COVID and, and the, the fact that the coronavirus had made it to the UK, um, my husband and both my, both our sons uh, were very ill with upper respiratory infections. Um, now, chances are, at least in my husband's case, he had all of the symptoms of coronavirus, but of course at that point he hadn't been to Asia, so they didn't think he could possibly have it. So we had, and I, around then I got a, a chest infection myself. So. That on top of 
all my other medical stuff. I was in loads of pain. And so he called me his warrior. He said, I'm such a, he said that Meg, Megan, you are such a warrior. And I didn't feel like it at the time because I felt like, well, if that's true, I'm a warrior who's losing this battle with my own body, right? Um, with my mental state. And then of course, a few months following that, um, COVID hit and we had lockdowns. And over here, like in Canada and the States, we all started to shop online where we could. Uh, we started to order comfort foods and takeaways because why? Because we were all worried. You know, the, the news made it seem like if you got coronavirus, you were automatically guaranteed to die or be hospitalized. And a lot of people sadly were at that point. You know, because because they had underlying issues, because perhaps they were also elderly and had perhaps perhaps were quite frail, or were dealing with conditions that had already compromised their immune systems. And as I came to discover later on, it doesn't help the fact that our bodies are so busy trying to cope with all of the crap food and the processed junk that we eat regularly, never mind what we ate through COVID and through lockdowns, um, we weren't doing ourselves any favor. Our bodies were so inflamed. And I'm just talking normal people, right? Nobody, nobody dealing with, say, fibromyalgia or chronic pains or autoimmune conditions. A normal, relatively healthy person would likely become quite unhealthy throughout the pandemic. Why? because we didn't want to go, we couldn't go into restaurants, we couldn't go to our favorite cafes, we, we, we were like, that's it, the world could end tomorrow, literally, I want to eat chocolate cake, or I want my favorite KFC takeaway, and you know, of course, Just Eat, Uber, Uber Eats, all the different food delivery people popped up, and you could get your takeaway delivered, and every place started to do it, my goodness, I I did it with my husband. We were like, you know what? Screw it. We we might we might catch COVID and we could be gone tomorrow. Let's get a, a takeaway Indian food or let's do Turkish or Mediterranean or whatever. Whatever we were craving, we could order it and get it delivered. Contactless and you know, I have to drop it on the front steps with the mask on and all that stuff. And so it was very easy for us as well as everybody else to crave comfort food because of the time of distress we were all in. And of course, by the time we got to the first opening up of, of restrictions in May of 2020, I, along with I think this entire nation and many people in the world, realized that we had put on loads of extra weight. We had gotten fat. We couldn't go to the gym. We, you know, you're limited in what you can actually do at home. And honestly, if you're stuck in the house, even if you have a stationary bike and your own little home gym, was anybody really doing anything? There were obviously people, some people did, but the majority of us, no, of course not. Who cares about being healthy when we could accidentally share air with our neighbors and die, right? I mean, that that's how I felt. That's how my husband felt. That's how our sons mostly felt. That's how most people felt. There were those who were perhaps, you know, like professional athletes, maybe. I know some of the football players over here, as in the soccer, the, you know, the, um, the soccer players, the professional ones, were going on Instagram and TikTok and showing their workout routines while they were stuck at home um, and what they were doing to stay fit and healthy. A lot of um, athletes who had been hoping to make it and travel to the Olympics were doing the same thing, trying to inspire people to work out and still stay healthy in spite of lockdown. And, and some people followed and others did not. But... Um, But I was one who did that. And by the time of May uh, of 2020, 
I was weighing at about 190, 195 pounds, which is basically what I weighed when I was pregnant with my second with my second son. Okay, so I looked massive. I wasn't pregnant. I wasn't eating for two, but I certainly looked like it. And I had figured there's no way I could ever lose weight, right? Because I was eating the things I was told to. I was eating whole wheat toast. I was eating pasta. I was eating um, rice, right? I was eating all sorts of fruits. I was making myself eat vegetables, although I, I cut back on fruit because of the fruit toast not being great um, for the triglycerides. So I cut that back. You know, I was making um, smoothies with avocado. I was making, I was juicing at one point with carrots and spinach and celery and apples. Um, I think I even had sweet potatoes in there at one point, peeled, beets. Oh, I know, trust me. I don't know what possessed me at the time because that just sounds horrible to me right now. All those carbs, even if I squeeze the juice out, because it was, we have one that separated the juice from the fib fibrous part of the vegetable or fruit. I'm realizing you had to go through a heck of a lot of fruits and vegetables to get one cup of juice. Seriously. And the spinach doesn't do well in that. And it's just, ugh, that's a whole other topic. It was disgusting. But here I was trying to do this trying to get in my leafy greens and my different colored fruits and veg and, you know, um, only eating lean protein. So chicken, lots of chicken breasts and some wings, um, lots of chicken breast, force myself to eat fish, even though I hate it. Um, we didn't really do seafood cause it was, it's costly and it's too fatty. I thought not knowing the truth. And thank goodness, I found my way to keto and from there on to carnivore. And I couldn't believe how much better I felt when I eliminated all the carbs, like all the carbs. So if you want to say be keto, ketogenic, okay, which is simply keep your carbs 20 grams total per day or less have limited amounts of full fat dairy, which could be in a little bit of cheese, uh, perhaps a couple of tablespoons of, um, what do they call it? Double cream, heavy cream in your coffee. If you are drinking coffee, um, and up to one cup's worth, well, this is, I don't know, one, one cup, one measuring cup's worth of non starchy vegetables per day if you want it and if you can tolerate it that's uncooked which is very little that's like i think four or five cauliflower bushes or four or five broccoli shrubs you know now here's the thing i because of my ibs i can't eat that stuff anyways so non-starchy or not i don't eat it I, no vegetables no fruit um and it was it was a challenge at first because my husband and my sons thought I was completely weird. I was a complete weirdo because here I was eating like six pieces of bacon and fried eggs with sprinkled cheese on top. Now, I quickly discovered that I can only do the egg the egg yolks, the egg whites, I, I don't tolerate very well. Um, I can have it a little bit once in a while, like once a month. We might, my husband might go out and grab us like... Um, egg and sausage McMuffins from McDonald's and then we just don't eat the muffin part, right? Because um, I would watched enough videos by Kelly Hogan and Dr. Ken Berry at this point, I realized that actually our brains need saturated fat. Yes, the, the, the brain runs on glucose. However, we don't have to eat glucose to get glucose. And that's the thing I didn't realize is that when I learned about being ketogenic, when I learned how to not, well, to cut down on all my carbs and not just like breads and pizzas and 
pasta and rice. Those are the easy, obvious things, you know, potatoes, even sweet potatoes, but a lot of vegetables have carbs, heavy carbs. A lot of fruits have very heavy carbs and other anti-nutrients and toxins you, you have to be careful of that were perhaps okay for animals to consume, but certainly not for humans to eat long term, you know. And as I was on keto and I realized, you know, I can have some limited non-starchy vegetables, but all the ones that are considered non-starchy and therefore okay in very limited amounts, like onions and peppers, I can't have anyways. I might as well just get rid of it all. Get rid of all the carbs and all the starches. That's in the fruits, in the vegetables, anything that is made up, anything that is processed, gone. And for me, I did that cold turkey because I had to, okay? However, not everybody can and not everybody should. And, and again, I'm not a medical expert. In case you wondered, I am not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a medical person. This is just what I have been doing for two and a half years that has worked for me. And not only have I been able to lose 80 pounds, yes, 80 pounds. Pound. I was huge. I was massive. I'm I'm five five, which is you know average height. I'm fifty, um, but I was carrying eighty extra pounds on my body that I did not need. That was not helping. It was making my inflammation and my pain so bad I could barely tolerate it. Okay, now. I have lost weight, but more importantly, I have reduced my inflammation, I have reduced my pain dramatically. It's still there, you know, and if I overdo things, I feel it. If not right away, then definitely the next morning. So it's not as though fibromyalgia is gone, it's not cured, but I would say if I take care of things, if I manage things, then the, the, the sort of chronic ache I feel. I can live with, okay, and it, it's not the end of the world for me in that case. But before that, I could barely get out of bed, I could barely get off the sofa. And now I find it hard just to sit and be still, you know, to just say watch a movie on, on Netflix or read something on my Kindle. I can do that, but often I feel like, ah, but I, I want to do, I got to get up and do something, right? So that's a good thing. And more importantly, my brain fog cleared up. Completely. The only time it ever comes back is if I've slipped up and I uh, maybe start eating a bit too much cheese or uh, I have a, a coffee with, with a bit of milk in it, like a, a, and a cappuccino every once and again. I try to keep my coffees limited to two maximum a day, regular coffee. Everything else is decaf. Uh, and I always drink it black. I had one exception on my birthday and had cappuccinos. And I paid for it the next day. So it was nice in the moment because it was a really nice cappuccino. Um, but not something I can do regularly. I don't do well with a lot of dairy, full stop, other than butter. Um, and I eat... Um, brown beef is my mainstay. It's my favorite thing to eat. It's usually 20% fat, sometimes 23%, depending what's available at the grocery store, with a couple of egg yolks. So I put like, I don't know, uh, a one cup serving of ground mince, chuck it in the frying pan, salt it a little, add a couple of egg yolks, and generally three pieces of bacon, extra crispy, and I eat that. And I usually eat twice, twice a day a meal like that. So that'll be breakfast. Um, and then again at night, that'll be dinner. And if I'm out, so I'm trying to get used to relaxing and being comfortable just chilling out at home. Later, if I'm at home or if I'm out and it's around lunchtime, if I feel hungry, um, there's a guy in town who sells uh, sausages. Uh, a sausage cart and I'll get a jumbo foot long just the sausage no bun and nothing on it and and that'll be my my treat or my after my lunch you know my afternoon snack if you will but 
I'm learning to listen to my body's signals about what I want to eat and when. Now the cool thing is that um, you know my husband has been following my advice. Is he full carnivore? No. He will still have like a little bit of leafy green salad, no dark greens. So very low oxalates um, and anti-nutrients, which is great and it's fine, you know, but he is sticking to meats. He's not having any starchy sides. He's not going out of his way and having fries or chips or anything crappy like that, which is so good for him. And he's lost weight. Um, and he's, his muscles are coming out and I'm starting to see his abs starting to come through a bit. And yes, he's back at the, he's at the gym because he enjoys working out. So good for him. Um, you know, and I guess, I don't know. I, I think the best thing a warrior can do, regardless of what kind you might be, is leading by example. And, and that's me. I want to be a, a warrior that simply lives by example. And so keto was great because uh, through <clears throat> following ketogenic diet, I, I was when I lost the first 60 pounds. The rest of it came off when I went full carnivore. And, you know, I cut out dairy basically fully, uh, except for butter. And the reason why that is an exception is because Butter has virtually no lactose. It's all the fat from the milk. So it doesn't have any of the lactose, which is what I have issues with. So if I'm cooking up uh, a nice steak, I'll, I'll pan fry it in a lot of butter. Um, I made this amazing pulled pork in the slow cooker yesterday. And so I had this big thick chunk of um, pork leg. I guess it is, yeah and put it fat side down. I have these really cool liners, like plastic liners, so cook whatever you're cooking, but it doesn't, you don't have to worry about soaking um, the slow cooker pot after, which is awesome. Anyways, um, I put that on high, fat side down, and then I put like three big slices of butter across the top and then just chuck the lid on and left it all day and then added just a bit of salt to season, and when I pulled it all apart, oh my gosh, it was delicious, delicious. And that left food for my son for his lunch today. Now, my older son, who's 21, he'll be 22 in a couple weeks, well, two and a half weeks, um, noticed that he has a bit of a belly. Now, He's otherwise fit, he's pretty healthy, he's out walking every day, he takes the dog out for an hour at least, and then the other one as well, and he's always trying to clean up and help around the house. Um, I don't know if part of it is because of how he stands, he, he has autism, he's, high, he's very high functioning, very bright um, in a lot of ways, but you can sort of tell because he doesn't have a very confident posture, he's often looking down and sort of bending forward. So he's quite slim other than this belly. And um, he was eating lots of cereal for breakfast and bread for sandwiches every day and pot noodles. And, you know, basically we have always given both our sons the choice to eat whatever they felt like. We, we weren't, because my husband and I went vegetarian one year. And we weren't gonna force that on them, right? So we were going to give them the freedom of choice. But then realizing, my husband's like, well, you know, all the stuff that we aren't eating, he's eating. And that's not good for him. And he said, you know, we said to my son, hey, you know what? Why don't you go eat like your mom does? Why don't you try going carnivore? Um, because then it'll, it'll help you lose that bit of belly and you'll feel way better about things. And my son was like, am I fat? No course you're not but the bread um, the bread and the pot noodles uh, and the chips not helping so went out got pepperoni sticks and lunch meat and sliced cheese that you know he can wrap them up together and I make sure I'm gonna make sure to leave leftovers in the fridge so if I do one steak for him I'll do two and then you know he's got lunch tomorrow he, all he has to do is heat it in the microwave no problem. 
And so he's been great. He uh, Yesterday was sausage patty with a couple of eggs and some bacon, and today was um, bacon and eggs and uh, breakfast sausages. So he's kind of enjoying this fact. But, you know, he said, Mom, yesterday, he's like, Mom, I think I might want to have a Subway sandwich. Is that okay? I said, Dude, as long as it's just, you know, today and not all the time, go ahead. And so he, I explained, he's got to ease himself into it. And he was a bit worried. He's like, can I still have coffee? Yes, you can still have coffee. Which reminds me, by the way, is it ideal to drink caffeine? Probably not. But those of us who drink it, we already know this. So if you want to drink coffee, you go and drink coffee. I am not the food police. I will, you know... It's not for me to say what you should or shouldn't have if, if I'm asked for my advice. And actually, it was so cool because my, my older son was the first one to say, geez, mom, why are, you, why are you eating meat and no bread? That's weird. Now, he's like, so mom, is this okay to have? Or, so mom, what should I do for lunch? And actually, my husband's asking for my advice. And I guess in a long roundabout way, trying not to push this this way of eating on any of them um but they've ended up coming to me to ask what they can do to stay healthy which feels pretty amazing um but you know because it's worked for me but um that that's that was my point is those of us who are already following perhaps a low carb keto or carnivore life i know it's hard to see others and go, wow, I have the answer. Just If you just let me tell you what to do, I can help you fix this. But people have to ask us, right? Um, that's just how it is. It, people have to ask. We can't just force it on anybody. A lot of people are bound and determined to eat crappy food. And that's it. But it's kind of nice. To be able to just eat this way, not just lose the weight, obviously, but feel so much better in overall health, in pain reduction, in inflammation reduction, in anxiety reduction, and to feel like I'm really recovering from bulimia, which took me over 30 years to do. And that, to me, is the great gift. Now, could I do this? with just the way I've been eating, if I wasn't also walking with God? Absolutely not. God, wh whatever you want to say, God, I don't know, it was like the Spirit whispered in my ear, or I heard, you know, just put this thought in my head. What about the keto, what about this keto thing? Now it could have been because my sister-in-law start, started doing it several years back to try to help with some of her arthritis pain. And as far as I can tell, as far as I know, it made a huge difference. Maybe that's why it resonated with me. Um, could be because I heard a friend say, oh yeah, he lost weight during the first lock after the first lockdown by doing certain windows for eating. And I thought, oh, keto, right, okay. I do not intermittent fast. Because coming from a background of calorie restriction and fasting, I can't do that. It, it has too many triggers for me. It works for some people, and that's great, but not for me. Um, but what I've learned is to work out when I'm hungry and when I'm not. And if I'm not hungry, I don't eat. And when I am hungry, I eat till I'm full. The one thing I do do is I do try to eat in the morning, for sure. Um, it helps signal the brain that, oh yeah, by the way, I'm awake. You know, it starts to turn off the melatonin and burst the energy vibes instead. And I always make sure I eat by 6 o'clock and certainly well before it gets dark. Because then that triggers the brain to go, okay, I have time to digest this and work this out before you go to sleep. And you know what? It keeps me on a pretty good circadian rhythm. Uh, might seem like I'm 
kind of foolishly going to bed early. Like last night I crashed out. It was like 10 to 10. And I kept, I was falling asleep on the sofa trying to read a, read a book of mine. I, I can't keep my eyes open. So I went to bed. Um, but you know what? That's okay. Cause I'm up early and I would rather have it that way than the other way around. So I guess I just, you know what, I wanted to share just how I'm feeling and it feels great that at least my husband and my son want to know what I'm doing and how it's helping. And, you know, I think little by little, uh, not that we really keep any vegetables in the house now because I just, we don't need them. You don't need to eat vegetables. You really don't. They're not required. People eat them if they like, fine. But most of them are very high in anti-nutrients and oxalates because those are their defense mechanisms. Because remember, vegetables and fruit, guess what? They were living things at one time. And they couldn't just walk, you know, get up and walk away from being hunted and eaten. So they had other means of protecting themselves, and that was some level of toxicity. You know, that's why they say with, like, legumes and pulses and beans, and even most seeds, if you're going to eat them, you got to soak them for a couple of days and rinse them really well and then cook them or bake them some way before you eat them. You are never supposed to eat them, like, raw. If you find um, a pumpkin seed... Are you supposed to eat it right from the pumpkin? No, of course not. You have to wash it several times, rinse it out, bake it in the oven, get rid of the toxicities. And even then, there are still some, right? Same with sunflower seeds, some with chia seeds, um, even things like quinoa, you know, that, that were eaten by those ancestral people, ancestral people, they weren't eaten raw. Through trial and much error, they realized they had to wash them and cook them up and turn them into something before they could consume them. So, you know, that that kind of says something, right? Um, and, and vegetables are no different. No different. And while fruits may not be harmful in that sense, um, they still have fructose in them, which will still convert into sugar um, and affect your triglycerides, right? Which affects eventually what gets converted into body fat and stored around your midsection as your adipose fat, which is which is not the good stuff to hang on to. But anyways, that's that wasn't really my overall point. My point was this, was that... We are all warriors in our own way. And I'm just, I just want to be an example. I want to be an example of light, of hope to people. Um, yes, I'm talking spiritually. Yes, I'm talking about, um, you know, our final destination and that it, I hope it, that everyone ends up in heaven with God. Of course. But... Also, I'm talking about what we're going to do with our lives on this earth whilst we have them. I had a choice. I could either stay inflamed and full of pain and full of hopelessness and continuing on doing the same things and hoping for a different result, or I could find something different, and I'm so glad I did. God helped me find keto and carnivore, and that helped me find my way back to him. Absolutely. And I've never felt better. So, I don't know, I guess I guess the title works. We can all be warriors about different things, fighting through all the battles of life, whatever they might be. Um, but we don't have to be um, we don't have to be fighting for something 
that will never come, right? We can actually fight for improved health mentally and physically, um, emotionally and spiritually. And I know for me, getting rid of all of the poisons and the toxins and the crap, the processed stuff, for, definitely. And even the stuff that we might think is healthy, like all the carbs out there. You know what? I got rid of all that stuff. And oh my goodness, what a difference it made to everything, to everything. Um, hey, if you've tried everything else, believe me, I tried all the regular therapy stuff. I tried physiotherapy. I tried hydrotherapy. I got occupational therapy. Nothing helped me, okay, because it, it didn't address the fact that I had to stop putting the garbage in my body that I was. It's a simple answer. It doesn't mean, it does not mean it's easy, because it's not, because it's not, you know, and you will probably feel it when you first stop putting all the processed stuff into your mouth, but I promise you it's worth it. It really is. You know, there are people out there who have followed this way of eating who have managed to come off some of their medications. There are some people out there who've managed to come off all their medications. I'm not making any promises because I'm still taking all of mine. However, whether you get to come off the medications or not, I think you'd find a bountiful improvement in your overall well-being. I mean, after all, what have you got to lose? right? Why not? Why not try? Um, that's all for today. Um, yeah, that's it. That's everything. That's all I had to say. Sorry. Um, I always have, find it hard to wrap these things up a bit, but that's because it's like, okay, did I forget to say anything? No, I guess not. But that, that's me for now. I really hope you guys have great days. It's a Friday. I know it's about 15 degrees here, a beautiful, beautiful fall day here in Colchester, England. I don't know what it's like where you guys are, but I hope the weather's um, doing something that you can enjoy. And I hope if you aren't able to get up and get out, that this can still provide you hope and encouragement. If you don't believe me, go back to some of my, my much older videos I've got one there called, just because we don't complain doesn't mean we're not in pain. And I filmed it whilst I was laying in my bed in agony. So when I say I understand what it feels like, I really, really do. I hope what I've shared and what I've experienced and how I'm trying to get through it is encouraging to you, is helpful to you in some way and that you can feel free to share it with anybody else that you think it might help or benefit. You guys are so amazing and it's so great. It's so great to have so many people um, subscribe to you. We just, let's just support each other. I mean, isn't that what we ought to be doing anyways? I think so. That's it for me, guys. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to have more content out really soon. We'll see how the weekend goes. There may be a... I always set out to do just a short video, and then it, I, I ramble. I get that. Um, but I just felt like there was a lot I wanted to just share today. So I hope that's helpful. Um, and always, if you have any comments or questions, please put them in, and I will always try to respond to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. It means everything to me. I hope and trust you guys have fantastic days and really great weekends. And I will uh, hopefully have some content, uh, hopefully at the end of this weekend. We'll see, what, we'll see how it goes, right? Hopefully I don't overdo it and uh, find myself too exhausted but I like making these videos and I'm really glad that you guys enjoy them. Any suggestions, any questions, any topics you want to know about, yeah, put them in the comments. Please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, 
like this, give it a thumbs up, please. That'd be great. That's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.